Hello friend, this is Paper Kitty. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a video here that um, <clears throat> I want to probably do in part. I'm not sure if this is going to be a little standalone uh, clip here or if I'm going to put it as part of a longer video. So here we go with the thing that I am doing uh, right now, which is basically I uh, wanted to just show you some things that are kind of getting my juices flowing for Christmas. I am loving, as usual, pink. I love pink. And uh, so I found this Sugar and Sparkle, which I think is probably the year, this this uh, year's um, new paper pad at Michael's, I believe. So... Um, anyway, it was the last one, and so I'm thinking a lot of people like it. I have seen a few things on, um, YouTube, and I will try to remember to list maybe a couple of those on my description box below. Um, but anyhow, I wanted to just kind of do a little flip through of that real quick and again I understand that most people already have this but um, there are some people that do not uh, I know I didn't have this and uh, so anyhow um, here it is and I think it's so cute it's got two of each paper so yeah, I th I'm thinking I'm going to try to um, come up with a um, junk journal theme, which I believe is going to be a pink Christmas. So that's the plan. You know, sometimes I have a plan and uh, it doesn't work out exactly the way I plan it. <laughs> so that's okay. And, um, but yeah, I love this little Santa. And I think I saw a couple of them where they use this as their cover. Because I want to use this as my cover. Uh, but I kind of want to, you know, make it a little different somehow. I want to do something different. I'm not sure. I'm thinking maybe I'll, coll I'll fussy cut him and then collage him onto something before I put that down on the cover I think that's kind of where I'm gonna go with it but I have a lot of different little like said plans uh, in my head and of course I'm gonna try to make them boop, come true but you know like I said that doesn't always work out sometimes it's a happy surprise sometimes it's not a happy surprise so you just never know uh, this is a reader's digest book and um, it's um, in decent condition, which I like. I picked it up at the thrift store for, I think, like a couple dollars. And so, um, anyway, it was just sitting there abandoned. No one looking Nothing. at it. And I thought, you know, this is a nice size for what I'm wanting to do here. So, I'm going to try to work with this book and see what happens. Like I said things could change but here we are um, this has nothing to do with Christmas much but it's just so pretty and so pink and so I don't know if I will incorporate these girls in there or not but this is the pattern paper for sewing and um, so it's making me want to make it kind of a a little vintagey and a little bit elegant, so a little shabby chic -y. I don't know. It may be a hybrid of all of that. Um, sometimes I can label things, and other times they have their own thing going on with them. Uh, another element that I'm considering using is this uh, fabric from a pillowcase, and it's just the prettiest pale pink and um, so, and it's got a little very faint, like a paisley print within it, but it's very faint. I mean, you really gotta look for it, you know, almost. So, um, but yeah, 
I don't know. I don't know if I'll use that or not. I found this uh, little, you know, scrap here also, which it's kind of a hotter, not a hot pink, but just a, it's more of a mauve pink, like a pretty strong mauve or something. Um, and so, I don't know. I don't know how I might use that. I'm thinking maybe as a closure, uh, maybe, you know, who knows. But anyway, I am going to be work, trying to work on some of these things and see where I go with them. As it stands, I do want to go ahead. I've decided that I would like to basically uh, gesso this uh, book because the colors are not really going too much with what I want. A little bit. Let's see if I can, you know, loosen it up in here. See, because there's this page right here that has a a space right here, and uh, I, I kind of sometimes I like to keep it uh, because I like that it's already got this kind of worked out. And if I get rid of it, then it's a little bit more complicated. Anyway, it's kind of hard to talk and think. So excuse me if I am quiet for quite a minute or two because I may have to speed up the video in some sections and you know do a little bit of editing here but yeah I'm thinking so okay yeah I'm just examining the spine basically just to see you know how I want to remove the guts of this book and if I want to try to keep this 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 paper this first very first page here sometimes I like to do that and it's basically in this case like the first two and um, so look how pretty that little flower is it's it's an amaryllis how pretty is that image okay so I'm gonna definitely want to keep that but not necessarily in the book I don't know look how old it is it's kind of I love that. That's so cool. Okay, so as I'm seeing it more and more, you know, it appears that this very first page, um, okay, it looks like I was able to rip it out. Okay, so that's, that's cool. So I'm going to keep that. And then, like I said, I kind of feel like... Um, you see how there's there's actually a separation with this cover part here so and it's here too actually so that's why I feel like I would potentially be able to remove even without using the exacto knife so but you just never know so anyway you want to do one side first okay so now that I've kind of move this around a little bit I'm gonna go ahead and come in with my exacto knife being very careful not to cut to the other side which by the way is it's easy to do it's really easy to cut that so you do kind of have to be taking your time I'm mostly gonna be uh, you know kind of I don't know if it's in frame here if I'm covering anything hopefully not so much but yeah so like I said it's kind of easy to cut and so I'm trying not to I'm trying to like not let it cut but you know it does appear that it's coming out so I'm pretty glad about that now on this side looks like it's also kind of working a little bit so I'm gonna go ahead and undo this usually it's okay to just do one side and then the other side but for some reason in this case I'm feeling like <clears throat> I'm wanting to do a little bit of both sides little by little for some reason it's kind of the way I'm feeling you know I guess after you do this many times you just kind of start feeling you know how you might want to work on on one of these books because they're all they're all uh, you know different some of them are falling apart more and so they you know they're they have their own way of kind of tearing out 
And then other ones like this one, like I said, it's pretty well, it's still pretty sturdy, which is what I wanted. Um, it's rare to find an older book that's still very sturdy. Okay, yay, it looks like I went ahead and did this one really well without, you know, cutting through the cover. Ta-da! Okay, so anyway, this is one way to do this, okay? I know people have, you know, other tutorials about how they do it, and, you know, maybe it's better, um, but it's not a competition. Just showing you how I do it. And uh, like I said, practice does make perfect, or at least improved. And uh, so here we have the cover. It's like I feel like it's such a, an accomplishment. <laughs> and it is, you know, because um, it's not easy, obviously. So, but yeah, it definitely helps when you've been, you know, when you get used to doing many of them, so, you know. So one thing I can tell you that I learned is not to do this when you're tired. Like make sure you have a nap first or something like that because if you try to rush this part, you're gonna make a hole through here, which is not the end of the world, but it's not ideal. So if you don't wanna make a hole there, make sure you take your time, maybe watch this video and kinda of get your motivation flowing there and uh, your patience gauge nice and available so okay so anyway I uh, I'm happy that, that I kept this these parts these like very very first and last pages uh, the X said I don't love what I did here that was a little impatient of me a little bit but eh, not the end of the world I probably will put a pocket here anyway which We'll cover that. Like I said, I'm still deciding on whether I want to put gesso on this or not. So that should be fun to know. But uh, before I continue, I'm going to go ahead and reinforce the spine. Because the spine is basically not there. It's, it's spineless. <laughs> no pun intended. Okay, so like right here, you see this is the spine. But this spine is made out of like you know this very interesting kind of material that's basically like a fabric you know and so um and a little bit of cardboard there but anyway i need to go ahead and reinforce this one i would like to do that so i'm going to do that and then as far as the the guts of it like i said there are some nice little images not too many of them but from time to time there will be something cute in there and i probably want to go through it um and keep it oh look how cute that image so yeah there, there's some in here that i'm probably going to want to go through um and keep and if anything I like the yellowing of the pages quite a bit too, um, so I could definitely use that for making other, you know, things where I use book pages. So I'm definitely going to be keeping this and using it as well, upcycling. So I think I'm going to go ahead and put a little pause on the video and come back when, um, when I start working on that little spine. Okay, see you then. Okay, so now I've got um, this cardboard. What, what this is, it's, it's not really, really heavy. It's kind of medium heavy. And um, I got it from, you know, when you buy a picture frame, sometimes it has more than one little thing to put behind the picture. And so I had an extra one, basically. But you can use basically like cereal box cardboard okay now you may want to double it up which i may actually do anyway on this one because this is almost like a cereal box thing so okay so to get the size that i want i'm gonna measure this book and i don't know if you can tell but it it goes a little bit past the pages just a tiny bit like barely barely a pinch so okay so I'm gonna go ahead and put this here and get my pencil and or 
Well, let's see if I can find a pencil because you know how that is when you need one. Okay, let's see if this will work. All right, so now <clears throat> I am bas basically using this as a template and kind of just going around it roughly. And so there it is. This is about what it's like. So I'll go ahead and get my little cutter thing here, my little cutting um, board here, and um, so I'm going to go ahead and try to line up, try to line this up a little bit, which okay, I think it's like right about there, and then i um, going to go ahead and do it again, because uh, I am going to double it up, so before I do that I'm gonna go ahead and just draw this too because it's a much straighter line anyway so that's gonna be helpful okay so then now I'm gonna go ahead and line that up here and actually the benefit of not having such a thick board is that when you use this thing to cut it it's easier to cut than if you use a super heavy-duty chipboard you know you might damage your tools like that so okay so here's that little mark I could just snip that through and uh, but before well yeah I guess I'm gonna go ahead and do that now okay so then now I'm gonna use this one to measure this one and hold it tight there you go okay so then that's basically what it looks like and it should fit here just fine um, sometimes, I mean, it, it might be a little too big or a little too small, but you, you just want to try to make it to, I think this one is perfect, I think, but, so, okay, so now I'm actually going to go ahead and do one more out of this soft material. Or, well, maybe not. Let me go ahead, since I still have this material, I'm going to go ahead and use this material. Let's see. Um, yeah, I want to go ahead and, and use one more mainly because I'm going to make a, like a little template to then do my punching of my holes. And so I'll show you how I use that here after a little bit but so let's see if I can line this up okay and then you got this part here might as well because I'm already here okay so let's see okay so this one ended up being just like a little bit wider so let me go ahead and just see if I can Cut it just a little more, just a tiny bit more, because really this one is for something else, so it's not going to go in the book, but let's see, yeah, that's, that's pretty close, so now I can't remember which is which, which is fine, because it means that it's that close, that you can't tell, that's a pretty good measurement there, so so now I'm going to go ahead and adhere and, um, you know, because it is the spine, I do like it to be pretty um, well adhered. Now, I, you could use um, Fabri-Tac uh, or like tacky glue, Aileen's tacky glue I think is fine, but I'm going to go ahead and, um, well, first of all, before I, I do that, I'm going to go ahead and adhere this piece to the other one because I want to make it double 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 trouble okay and then I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this and uh, yeah I'll go ahead and do that all right so I want it to be nice and adhered I'm going to go ahead and use this fabric tag, but yeah, the um, Aileen's, I have used Aileen's in the past, 
and I do like it. Um, so, you know, it, it's fine, honestly. I don't think it's uh, an inferior glue. It is slightly inferior, obviously, because now we have Fabri-Tac, and Fabri-Tac is just amazing. So, um, now I probably want to let this dry a little bit. And, uh, you know, make sure that when I close it on each side that it is, you know, the size is right and everything else. So, yeah, this little piece that I have, I just wanted to have a, an extra piece because when we make the holes for the signature, it's going to be already handy to have the exact size that I need because I'm going to draw it on here. And then use it on as a template. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to keep this handy. And uh, it's good to say up and then down because that way you know which is up and down. At this point, it really doesn't matter because you haven't made the holes yet, but it will matter eventually. So I'm gonna go ahead and now that I had that pencil nearby. All right, so I'm going to put this to a side where my little templates are for now. <clears throat> yes, my desk is quite a mess. So, yeah, it's hard to see. All right, so now I'm still debating how I want to deal with the inside. I'm still kind of thinking that, you know, that I wanted it to be like all white. And, you know, for that I would have to probably do the gesso a couple times but then there's a part of me that's kind of not wanting to do that and it's because I'm thinking that that green will probably be okay to use but I don't know I guess I just wanted it to be all pretty pink and like gold you know and so I don't know if I'm still loving that idea or not but um, in any case I do want to go ahead and basically um, decide on what to do with this which you know I think I'm gonna go ahead and and cut it out I'm gonna cut this one out which is the one that I had uh, kind of messed up a little bit on it anyway so let me see if I can get a little something to cut over. I do have a self-healing mat, but I um, I can use it. So it's under this thing here. So, but yeah. So yeah. I mean, I could probably there you go. Rip it out a little bit now. Yeah. Okay, so now I've got this piece, which I may need or I may be able to use for something else. And then this piece, um, I think is the one I'm going to go ahead and put over. See, now I wish I would have done this piece because now this one here has a little, this little thing right here, which I'm not loving. But there again. Perfection is not realistic, so. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just, um, try, I'm trying to mark where the, this side is because I do wanna go ahead and, you know, get that part pretty nice and adhered. So now that I've kind of roughly measured that and kind of, let's see if we can do it here. And yes, it looks like I have done that. It's fine. It's pretty good. Okay. Let's, let's see what happens. See what I mean though? It has this part that I didn't really want to keep. Oh. All right. So, okay. So it's not super, super perfect. Um, I think I could use one teeny little snippet more right there, maybe. Let's try that. Let's try that. Okay, okay let's 
see if that helped. I think it did. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. Okay, again, I'm going to go ahead and hit the fabric tag. And that, actually, this one's called Fabric Fix, which is kind of like fabric tag. So, and it's also that expensive, but I think it's a little tiny bit less expensive. Not, not a big difference. So, but it works almost exactly. Like, I can't really tell the difference, so. Um, let me go ahead and go ahead and massage that down there. Again, I don't particularly care for this little thing here, you know, but, um, you know, the more and more I'm looking at it and thinking about it, the more I'm thinking I do want to gesso this, um, so that might not matter too much anyway, because... I'm going to be using the gesso. Okay. So let's see. This here, I need to put a little bit of glue. And, uh, so that's what I'm going to do. Put a little more glue on there. And, uh, because I like the the sturdiness that you can get from doing it this way, kind of like that. Okay, so I'm gonna wait for it to dry because I feel like if I keep playing with it, it's not gonna adhere the way I want it to. So I'm gonna leave it alone, kind of flat like that, and then come back to you with what I've decided to do. But as it stands, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to want to gesso this side, so I'm probably going to work on that. Uh, and hopefully by the time I get back to this video, this will be all white, at least on the outside. So, see you okay, then. So here I'm just turning the, phone, the uh, video back on because this, the, I hadn't done this in a minute and it just reminded me of, of my love for mixed media. <clears throat> And how freeing and relaxing it is to to do it because it is messy, you know. And sometimes when I get really um, technical and, you know, I'm trying to get things done, you know, well, you know, it doesn't get too messy, you know. But right now this is messy and it's just so much fun. And that's why I do love mixed media. You know, I like collage, I like junk journals, I like paper crafts, I love all those uh, arts. With that being said, we are coming to the end of this video and I would like to thank you for coming along with me. Be sure and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you comment below and let me know if these are the kind of videos that interest you. Also, if you have not subscribed, be sure and hit that subscribe button. That way you can follow me as I continue to work on this fun little junk journal. Also, be sure and hit that notification bell so that YouTube will let you know when I've made a new video for you. Again, thank you so much for spending this time with me. Love you so much, love you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye now.